Mo Farah just reveals why he's thinking of retiring. It's not every day that we see athletes retire and leave their passion for good, but when we do, it's heartbreaking for the fans and especially for the athlete who had to leave everything, their first love, their passion, and most importantly, a piece of their heart. Nonetheless, the list continues and it appears that another icon, Mo Farah, has joined it. What are you waiting for? Watch this video through to the end to learn all about this legendary long-distance runner's career and most significantly, his retirement plans. Mo Farah's life has been far too surreal to be true. His full name is Hussein Abdi Kahin, and he was born in Somaliland on March 23, 1983. He has stated often that his father died in a civil war when he was four years old and that he was separated from his mother soon after. As a result, he spent a few years as a child in Mogadishu with his extended family and was unlawfully trafficked to the United Kingdom at the age of nine, when he was given the identity of Mohamed Farah and was forced to work as a domestic servant. He was soon flown out of the country by a woman he had never met and then forced to care for the children of another family. In July 2000, he applied for and received British citizenship using the name Mohamed Farah. Needless to say, the first few years in Britain were undoubtedly difficult for him because he wasn't even permitted to attend school. However, around the age of 11 or 12, he started attending Year 7 at Feltham Community College by telling the staff he was a refugee from Somalia. Alan Watkinson, a physical education instructor, was the one who first noticed Farah's athletic ability. Despite being a renowned runner today, Farah's original career goals were to be a car mechanic or a right winger for the Arsenal football team. It didn't take much time for Farah to become a member of the Borough of Hounslow Athletics Club in West London. In the 1994 London Youth Games, he ran across country for Hounslow as an under-13 and finished 10th in the English School's Cross Country Championships in 1996, when he was just 13. He also won the first of five English school crowns the following year. Recognizing Farah's skill, athletics philanthropist Eddie Kulukundis financed the legal fees required to complete Farah's naturalization as a British citizen, allowing him to compete without the need for a visa. At the European Athletics Junior Championship in 2001, the same year he started attending St. Mary's University in Twickenham, Farah won his first significant race in the 5,000 meter distance. He was also one of the first two athletes to train at the Endurance Performance Center that year and in 2005, Mo Farah began working out full time as an athlete. He moved in with a group of gifted and diligent Kenyan runners including Craig Mottram and Micah Kogo, a former world record holder in the 10 kilometer road race. Farah later claimed in a BBC interview that these athletes only sleep, eat, train and rest and have no social lives. He also emphasized that he would need to put in a lot of effort if he wanted to compete on an equal footing with these sportsmen. Farah mostly raced over the 5,000 and 10,000 meters on the track while running competitively from 1,500 meters to the marathon. He has been a successful racer for more than 20 years and his 10 gold medals, 4 from the Olympics and 6 from the World Championships, make him the most successful male distance runner in history. He is also the most successful British track athlete in the annals of modern Olympic competitions. It goes without saying that retiring is something to start thinking about for someone who has had more than 20 years of a legendary career. In reality, it's easier and preferable to just give up, rest, and stop straining your body any further as Mo Farah approaches 40 years of age in less than six months. Even if he is still physically fit, desires, and loves to race, the harsh truth is that retirement is inevitable. However, just like his supporters, he too wants to postpone his retirement as much as possible, but it doesn't seem to be an easy task given that it appears that his body is gradually giving out. In fact, Sir Mo Farah recently had to withdraw from the 2022 London Marathon because of an injury. It is important to note that he hasn't actually run in any of the prestigious races during the past three years, winning only seven of them at some point. Additionally, sources close to Farah had stated that if his performance in the next race fell short, he might retire from elite running. Even though the London Marathon will return to its springtime location in 2023, he has declined to declare if this will be his final year. As a matter of fact, he will not even compete in any of the world's Commonwealth Games or European Championships this summer. Earlier he even stated, My goal is to finish a half marathon to train for the London Marathon on October 2nd and gauge how well my body is doing. I've stopped running on the track, so that's it. But it appears that God has different plans for him. 
He has also expressed how eager his kids are for him to compete in the Olympics, quoting, Dad, Dad, when are the next Olympics? Further adding, I stated I wouldn't do them, at least not anymore. My body isn't capable of doing what it did. Well, it's not difficult to assume that Mo has retired from both track and the Olympics. Furthermore, given that the race on October 2nd was something he was working hard for, but with it now gone and Mo failing to participate, the future of his professional career is anything but obvious. Mo is an icon, and inspiration and definitely retiring would be devastating for his followers. Yet, there are two schools of thought on Mo's retirement. One that wants him to put himself first, and the other that wants to watch this icon do what he and others love to see him do, run. Prior to Sunday's London Marathon, Mo Farah has even been urged to draw motivation from world record holder Iliad Kipchoge. The four-time Olympic gold medalist Farah has not yet revealed his plans for his career, but race director Hugh Brasher thinks the 39-year-old is still very much a force to be reckoned with. I think Iliad is illustrating, age 37, and he's running a PB. That the age limits that we used to assume existed do not necessarily now exist, said Brasher who said Farah will always be welcome at the London Marathon. In fact, Iliad Kipchoge, one of Mo Farah's biggest supporters, has urged him not to retire. According to him, Mo Farah still has a lot more to give to athletics, especially as he approaches his 40th birthday. However, Mo Farah has only competed three times in the last seven years due to a variety of minor issues. After lowering his marathon time in Berlin by 30 seconds, even at the age of 37, Kipchoge is eager to continue making history and motivating other fellow athletes, including Mo, to continue moving forward as well. Mo Farah has a lot more to give. I think he'll come back stronger, said Kipchoge. He has served as a fantastic example for me and the entire generation, Iliad Kipchoge remarked. He is really a role model, and I want to see him continue to be that role model in the future as well. He has won gold medals at the Olympics, the World Championships, and cross-country competitions, and has accomplished a great deal on the track. In fact, even Mo appears not to be in any mood to leave his biggest passions, as any time Mo is asked what he thinks about retiring and when he plans to do so, he is constantly observed turning down the talks or simply playing it off. He even told hello during the introduction of Huawei's new GT3 watch, I'll retire at some point, but not right now. I still get the impression that I am young. Finally, it is critical for Mo to consider his health without regard for his desire to do good. Being healthy is the greatest treasure of life, and retirement is the harsh reality. Mo should definitely face this harsh reality as soon as possible, rather than constantly putting off his health concerns. In the end, no matter what he decides to do, we can only hope he chooses his health over everything. With that, our video for today comes to an end, everyone. We genuinely appreciate you sticking with us throughout. Please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Turn on the notification bells to receive all information about our channel. Take care till then, and we'll see you all soon.